One, two, three. Good morning, and welcome to this service of worship at Bountiful Community Church on this third Sunday of Advent. Uh, this Sunday we're going to be lighting the candle of joy. At this time, what we usually do with our service, and welcome to all of you AIM uh, parents and students in the choir, we're so blessed to have you here today. What we usually do is, if we have a concern and a prayer request for ourselves, for family, or for the neighborhood, or for the nation, we come up and we light a candle before the service in memory. So at this time, if those of you who wish to come forward and light a candle, please come forward. Let us stand and join with our call to worship. We come to prepare the way, the hope of Christ, the peace of Christ. The kingdom of heaven has come near. Amen. And let's join together with our gathering prayer. The coming of our Lord is near, and we wait in joyful expectation. Draw close, Lord Jesus Christ. Shed your light upon all that is filled with darkness. The coming of our Lord is near, and we wait with hope-filled hearts. Draw close, God's beloved Son. Teach us the wonder of your all-embracing love. The coming of our Lord is near, and we wait for the fulfillment of God's promises. Draw close, reconciler and transformer of all things. Renew our world. Restore your peace. Display your righteousness. And let's have a moment of silent reflection. And let's join together with our first song, just the second verse of Joy to the World. Savior reigns. Let all their songs employ, while fields and floods, rocks, hills, and plains 
Repeat the sounding joy. Repeat the sounding joy. Repeat, repeat the sounding joy. You may be seated. Let's pray. Holy God, may the light of Christ, which can never be extinguished, shine in our hearts today. And may we carry Christ's light into the world, proclaiming the good news with exceedingly great joy. Amen. And let's join together with the third verse of Joy to the World. And you can stand. another and welcoming for everyone so let's join together with our welcome no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey you're welcomed here the peace of Christ be with you 
Christ is the peacemaker, and he calls us to be peacemakers as well. So let's greet one another with the sign of God's peace. Usually, before the pandemic, we'd go around and greet one another, but this is safe distance. <laughs> well, you may be seated. And it is our great honor to host AIM, uh, Artists in Motion, homeschoolers. And they are wonderful, they are all talented, and they're gonna grace us now with some, uh, their senior choir, with their choir selection, Silent Night, and What Child Is This, O Come Emmanuel Melody. So, thank you, AIM.
thank you so much. That was amazing. That was great. Well, now comes a, a time where we, uh, we really cherish welcoming new members. And I'd like to have Chuck and Charlene please come forward. Now what we do is we confirm our baptism and our unity in Christ with Chuck and Charlene. And then what we do is we make a covenant. Uh, we covenant together in our denomination. We covenant with each other. Uh, as members, we covenant with the congregation and the congregation covenants with new members to uphold them and be there for them and as a family. We're a church family here. So Chuck and Charlene, by your baptism, you are made one with us in the body of Christ, the church. Today, we rejoice with your pilgrimage of faith, faith which has brought you to this time and place. And we really give thanks for you as a part of our community. Now, the questions respond to I do or I will. Do you promise to participate in the life and mission of this family of God's people, sharing regularly in the worship and enlisting in the work of this local church as it serves this community and the world? I do. I do. And you members of the church here, do you uh, covenant with Chuck and Charlene to be there for them, to uphold them and support them as they serve the community and the world? I do. And Chuck and Charlene, as you were united uh, with Christ in the triune God, do you believe in God? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ? I do. And do you believe in the Holy Spirit? I do. Welcome to Bountiful Community Church, Chuck and Charlene. And we have a Bible? Yeah. And in Chuck, here, Charlene, Charlene. <laughs> and we'd like to present you with a, uh, a Greek and English interlinear New Testament that has the Greek and two versions of the Bible as well. All right. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. At this time, what we usually do is we share our joys and our concerns and lifting up prayers to God for our concerns and praising God for all that God has done. So at this time, we open up uh, the congregation for prayer requests. Do we have any specific prayer requests? Yes. We're going to pray for those who do not have a way to celebrate with family and friends who feel alone and isolated. Let's also pray for those who are suffering different depressions during this year. I know the COVID has been very, very hard with isolation and, and distance and, and things not right. And depression is easy to sneak up on you and stress. So let's pray for all those who don't have a place to find family that they will 
Father God, we ask for those who are alone this time of Advent. In this Christmas time, we ask that you would touch those who are alone. We ask that you would bring people to their aid, bring people to their side and befriend them, uplift them and be there for them during this time of, of family. And help us, Lord God, to keep our eyes open to those who are in need, to those who need an uplifting hand and who need love. Help us to be your peacemakers and messengers of the love of the gospel. In Jesus' name, Lord, hear our prayer. Yes. Kim. Oh. Let's pray for Amy and also for all those who are suffering during this time with different uh, illnesses and, uh, and cancer. And let's pray for those who, who, who need an extra measure of God's healing this Christmas season. Father God, we think of Amy and we think of all those who are suffering through cancer, Lord. It's a horrible disease. We ask your healing touch to be upon Amy and all those who are suffering this Christmas season. In this moment of silence, we bring before you their names. Great healer, great physician, touch and aid. Guide the physicians who are helping them and uplift and heal. We ask in Jesus' name, Lord, hear our prayer. Whoop. First, Lord. Janine. Sure. Let's pray for Janine. With She's suffering with lung cancer. Father God, we ask that you would touch Janine and help her, Lord God. Be with her. Manifest your presence in her life, Lord God, and uplift her soul. Be with the doctors. Guide them properly for the proper treatment, Lord God, and may she be healed. We ask in Jesus' name. Lord, hear our prayer. Michelle. We'll, we'll do these two separate. Let's pray for Ed as he's going through his heart procedure. Father God, we thank you for Ed and all he has done in our service here at this church. And we thank you for his character and his presence and his love for life and just his, his willingness to do anything. We ask that you would bless him immensely, Lord God, during this procedure, help it to go well, and give Ed uh, all the blessing and healing that that he needs to accomplish this journey that you've given him lord god and we thank you so much for healing that it comes sometimes when we least expect it and sometimes we wait for it a long time but you are the faithful healer and we commit this to you in Jesus' name lord hear our prayer Let's also pray for those who have lost loved ones. Of course, you've probably seen on the news the horrible uh, tornadoes that have ripped through five different uh, states and obliterated nursing homes. And the, there is a candle factory where all, 70 people passed away who were working during the night. So let's pray for the families and the recovery efforts. Father God, we ask that your presence would be with those who are helping at this time in these five states. And we ask, Lord God, that your presence and mercy would be with all the families of lost loved ones. We know, Lord, the tears will flow. We just ask your presence to be there. Guide ministering angels to uplift hearts, to help in the rescue efforts. Lord, we give this over to you, this immense emotional time and, and, and horrible longing to know if loved ones are alive or not. We ask that you, your presence would be there in a very palpable way, that you would touch the lives, touch hearts, and bring closure and bring healing. Lord, hear our prayer. And let's continue the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples oh so long ago. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Hear our prayer, O God. Hear our prayer, O God. Incline your ear to us and grant us your peace. Amen. Once again, it's our incredible joy to hear the AIM School Choir. This is the Junior Choir this time, and they're going to treat us with How Far Is It to Bethlehem?
Thank you. You know, there's the voices of children singing. I don't know if, if you're like me, but it's like the angels are a little closer, especially on Christmas. What a joy. Thank you so much. Well, our scripture lesson today comes from the Gospel of Luke. So let's join together with the Gospel of Luke, chapter 1, verses 38 to 56. I am the Lord's servant, answered Mary. May your word to me be fulfilled. Then the angel left her. At that time, Mary got ready and hurried into a town in the hill country of Judea, where she entered Zechariah's home and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. In a loud voice, she exclaimed, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the child you will bear. But why am I so favored that the mother of my Lord shall come to me? As soon as the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the baby in my womb leapt for joy. Blessed is she who believed that the Lord will fulfill his promise to her. And Mary said, My soul glorifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has been mindful of the humble estate of his servant. From now on all generations will call me blessed, for the Mighty One has done great things for me. Holy is his name, his mercy extends to those who fear him from generation to generation. He has performed mighty deeds with his arm. He has scattered those who are proud in their innermost thoughts. He has brought down rulers from their thrones, but lifted up the humble. He has filled the hungry with good things and has sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel, remembering to be merciful to Abraham and his descendants forever, just as he promised our ancestors. And Mary stayed with Elizabeth for about three months and then returned home. This is the word of God for the people of God. Join me as I pray. Dear Lord, I ask you to anoint my lips of clay so I can boldly proclaim your words of truth, not through the power of my own flesh, but through the power of your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, a retired man, excuse me, a retired man had purchased a home near a high school, and he spent the first few weeks of his retirement in peace. And then the school year began. One afternoon early in his first, the first semester of the school year, three loud young boys came down his street, beating merrily on every trash can they came across. Then they did the, so the following day, and then the day after, until finally the retiree decided it was time to take some action. The next afternoon, he walked out to meet the boys as they banged their way down the street, and he stopped them and he said, you kids, you kids are a lot of fun. I used to do the same thing when I was your age. Will you do me a favor? I'll give you each a dollar if you promise to come around every day and do your thing. You know, the boys were more than happy, and they continued to bang the bins every day as they walked home. After a week, though, the old man walked out and greeted the kids once again. However, this time he did not have a smile on his face. Well, kids, you know the recession's really putting a big dent in my economy. Well, I'm going to have to cut down your pay to 50 cents a day to keep you kids banging those bins. And the kids were obviously unimpressed, but they accepted the reduction in pay, and they continued to do it every afternoon. A few days later, though, the man approached them again. Look, he said, I, I haven't received my retirement checks for so long, and I'm going to have to just give you 25 cents for the banging of the bins from now on. Is that okay? What's this? The drum leader exclaimed. If you think we're going to waste our time beating around these bums for 20, drums for 25 cents a day, then you're deranged. No way, mister. We quit. 
And so the man enjoyed peace and serenity for the rest of his days. <laughs> ah, quiet and peace. There's really nothing like quiet and peace to settle the stressful soul, especially in these holiday seasons. You know, sometimes you really desperately desire peace and quiet, especially if you have a larger family. There's something's always going on in a larger family. And there's something that usually is always breaking or some commotion going on. And there's sometimes no peace. Usually some things in life can be so stressful and even maddening that the stress and problems keep on mounting though, don't they? And it's at those times that you really need peace. Not, not just peace and quiet, but peace in your heart and in your mind as well. Peace for your nerves. You know, in our scripture today, it focuses on peace. You know, Mary had just had an amazing encounter with the angel Gabriel, who told her that she was going to be the anointed of God and would bring forth Messiah through a virgin birth. Just imagine all the emotions, all the thoughts, and all the concerns that flooded through Mary's mind at that time. Now, she was a very young girl. She was really just in her mid-teens at this time. And that is a lot to process for a young woman. Imagine after, the, after all the excitement and adrenaline wore off, though, how the weight of this announcement and the responsibility impacted her. It must have been enormous. She really needed help. So she went to someone who had the experience and the wisdom to help her, her older cousin Elizabeth. Now, Elizabeth was just six months earlier in the same sort of situation. She underwent a miraculous conception because an angel promised her husband, who is the chief priest, that she would give birth to a child. And the one who announced that was also the archangel Gabriel. And now she was carrying the infant who would be John the Baptist. And when Mary met Elizabeth, she was six months into her term with John the Baptist. And that fat baby was filled with the Holy Spirit. And Elizabeth was also empowered with the Holy Spirit and gave forth an inspiring song of empowerment. It's called the Song of Mary or the Magnificat. An inspiring song that some churches in some countries, such as India, Guatemala, and Argentina, Argentina, have all outright banned the Song of Mary from liturgy in public because it encourages equality in cultures that still hold on to old roles. But there's something of a movement to bring it back because it's an ancient and it goes beyond culture. It's empowering for everyone. It's a message of hope because the message of hope is universal and not just limited to some. And the message is this, no matter what situation that you find yourself in, God is there with you. And sometimes God works miracles through the ordinary things of life. God works miracles through the ordinary things of life. God was with Mary in an incredible way and in an intimate way that is incomprehensible to us. But God was also in the emotional aftermath of this divine revelation and manifestation in Mary's own body. For God had came to Elizabeth first. And in her old age, just like Abraham and Sarah, God gave Elizabeth a son in her old age, a miraculous birth. 
to make way ready for the Christ child. And John the Baptist's first job in doing that was to help settle Mary's heart and give her hope. By being filled with the Spirit of God and jumping for joy in the belly of Elizabeth at that encounter of the baby Jesus just manifest, it gave them hope. His mother Elizabeth was filled with the Spirit and gave forth a wonderful blessing and gave Mary hope. Hope that inspires for the long road ahead with the birth and raising of the very Son of God in the flesh. Hope. And because Mary had strength and hope, she overcame her problems and its accompanying stresses and gave us hope for tomorrow because Christ is with us the Christ that she birthed and raised. Sometimes, out of nowhere, in the midst of troubles, hope comes knocking. Three brothers, age 92, 94, and 96, decided that they, they would, uh, in their old age, live together in one house. One night, the 96-year-old draws a bath, puts his foot in it and pauses, and then he yells downstairs, Hey, was I going to get in the bath or get out of the bath? The 94-year-old yells back, I don't know. I'll come up and see. And then he starts up the stairs and he pauses and yells, oh, Was I going up the stairs or coming down? And the 92-year-old was sitting at the kitchen table having coffee, listening to his brothers, and he shakes his head and says, I sure hope I never get that forgetful. Knock on wood. I'll come up later for both of you when I see who's at the door. <laughs> no matter what you're going through today, have hope. God is with you today, and God will work things out even if you don't feel like God is working things out, because God is faithful, and God will be there for you. You might not feel it, but it does not make it any more real. God is faithful, so look to God for hope, because hope changes and hope heals. Amen. So in response, let's sing another verse of Hark the Herald Angels Sing, just the first verse, and we're going to sing the second and the third after our doxology. So, hark the herald angels sing just the first verse, and let's stand.
And now we respond to God's voice by giving our offering. And our offering is at the back. We don't pass it around. Feel free to give if you wish. And those uh, of you at home, you can give by going to our website, uccbccchurch.org, and hit the Give button. So let's join together with our invitation to give. Holy One, this Advent season we wait in peace. A peace deeper than our anxiety and fear. Receive these generous offerings. Amen. And let's join together in our doxology. Let's join together with our prayer of dedication. With these gifts, dear God, accept the praise and thanksgiving of our hearts, which rejoice in your goodness and love. Let our gifts point to your presence in the world and further your dream for the world through Jesus, Emmanuel, God with us. Amen. And let's continue to sing verses 2 and 3 of Hark the Herald Angels Sing. second birth. Hark the herald angels sing glory to the newborn King. Amen. And you may be seated. Now, do we have any announcements? Yes. Don't take anything, no glass bottles, and if you want to donate it, just pick it up to the factory and you can give it in the end by the volunteer folks. This month's salad dressing. Salad dressing, yeah. Next week, we're going to make all of the things up for sale. Just log in. Don't forget to go to the little tags. You haven't had a chance to pick one of the dollars. Also, if you are interested in spending the congregation or uh, to fill in on a gift for the staff, which would be our pastor, our secretary, or organist, uh, you can do that, give that cash to me, 
Let's join together in our with our benediction. Do we, do we want to go in a circle, or are we too too many? So what we usually do with social distancing, we get in a circle, and if you, for those of you with family, you can hold hands, uh, and we give each other a benediction and, and uh, prayer for journey onward. So if you wish, we're all going to join in a circle. So what we do is, I'm going to give the benediction, and then we're going to sing to the tune of Old Lang Syne, our choral response. So join together with our um, reflective benediction. Never put your faith in worldly status and never under underestimate your heavenly importance. My soul. Let your trust in the coming Christ soar within you like wings of joy and go into the world and serve one another as God bearers. joy, peace from God our Creator through Jesus our Savior and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit our Nurturer be with you this day and evermore. Amen. Lord let your servant go in peace. May your love go with all felt your restoring grace which all the world shall know the light that dawned in Bethlehem now shines for all to see creator Christ and Holy Ghost be praised Peace. Thank you. Thank you. It was wonderful. Pleasure to be with you. It was nice to have you. Thank you. Thanks. We had a wonderful service. Thank you. It was so wonderful to have the kids singing. Oh, it wasn't that. Like you said, the angels from heaven. I know. Especially the little ones. Is this church uh, like a Baptist? We are. It's the United Church of Christ, which we're like uh, um, very ecumenical. So us personally, we're, we just believe in Christ, believe in God, love one another, serve the first two, the rules of Christ, love God with all your heart, and love your neighbors yourself. Let's be more perfect. So yeah. thank you. It's been wonderful to be here today. Thanks. Yeah. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. What's your name? Diana Brown. Diana Brown. Uh-huh. So many names with A, my I lose. I only know a, a few by heart. <laughs> nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hi, thank you so much. Thank you so much. It was wonderful. They did a wonderful job. Amazing. Thank you. You're a good leader. <laughs> Thank you.